Welcome to how to design lace. Okay, this is, lace is so simple and I think it freaks people out because they see this complex patterns and they feel like they're going to um, mess it up if they mess something up. But the great news is, is that kind of you can't see the forest for the trees thing applies here. If you miss one little line, there are so many other trees that you're never ever going to see that you missed one little line. Okay, so when we're designing lace, we're using it for many, many things. We have, in this case, I've got a little clothespin. I wanted to do a personalized little thing. It's kind of almost like a color story. I've kept the colors really soft. And then I just embellished with a little bit of cross hatching, which is just lines in one direction, lines in another, and dots. Very, very simple, very basic, but it really helps trim this piece out. Okay, so then we go into here, and this really almost isn't lace. Um, I've got some cross hatching here, but it's almost like a border. Um, so I've taken lace, one step out of lace, and I've taken it and created borders with things. So instead of a lacy thing, I've created um, just a vine and rosebuds. And then I've done a little cross hatching in the middle of my oval insets. But very much, you could consider this the same exact kind of thing. Lace is just patterns. That's all it is. They're just patterns. Taking an example here, this is Halloween lace. Okay, so we've got bats and moons. So I took um, stereotypical icon wreath. I separated it down to two colors. And, you know, the, the orange and the black. And actually, there's probably four or five colors cause to get the gradation. But I told a color story, which is extremely important um, in lace. That's, I think, one of the things you could really pay attention to. Um, you either have to have a lot of contrast or you need to have a little contrast. It kind of goes, I mean, you could do the middle of the road too, but one or the other tends to be more striking. Um, I've incorporated glitter and things like that. Once again, cross hatching, dots. My spider webs are simply lines with dots on them, um, you know, with some basic iconry once again. But the way that I connect it and make a pattern going all the way around, this is what we're really talking about here is pattern making. And that's what I want to kind of focus on as we go through today. How to create an ever building pattern. In this particular case, this is a lace ornament. Okay, now this is painted on a round object, which is a little bit different. And these look gorgeous on these beautiful stands um, on a bookshelf and things like that. People do keep things like this up year round. So here we have um, an ornament that is painted all the way down and around, but how do you get from there all the way down here and how do you create a pattern? This example was made using the craft lathe and we'll get into that later, but um, this is not so much um, a repeating pattern as it is I created bands of patterns, okay, and that's another kind of technique. Okay, this is a tray and I've put butterflies out here, you know, and the butterflies, because they're very symmetrical, is very easy to incorporate them into a pattern. Um, once again, I'm telling a color story. I've got these dreamy blues and purples going along in here. I've got a tray that I left the edge silver. This is just reclaimed from Goodwill um, or something like that. I didn't worry about the texture underneath. I painted right over it. Um, use paint adhesion medium to clean it, and then use paint adhesion medium, and you'll be great. Okay, so. In this particular case, I started with the center medallion. I could very easily have just done a border right out here on the edge. There's a lot of ways and a lot of placement for lace. And speaking of borders, borders is one of my favorite reasons to do. This is the um, Lace and Roses Table Runner. Okay, in this case, I've used my lace as a border. I, it's not the main design. Um, it's not the main thing at all. So it's a supporting rule. And it even is supporting for my little rose buds which is also telling my color story. It's one of my repeating elements for my color story because I've got these bigger roses here in the middle and obviously I would want something pink in this outer edge to repeat. So r lace can be many, many things. And so then the question is, is how do you even begin designing your own lace? Okay, well we've got the new book, <coughs> which is one of the reasons we spurred into um, redoing this DVD. The new book actually has sketches, artist sketches. Um, Jessica is our graphic designer and she's never done lace before. And while she was creating the book, she decided to see if she could sketch some things. So we actually incorporated her sketches in here to show you how easy it really is. We've given you two things, two tools, and one is a square grid and one is a round grid. These are both very vital. 
to creating lace. And then we've gone through and we've given you different patterns, suggestions, and ideas, um, diamonds and things like that, but that's kind of jumping the gun. So I'm going to close this. The tools are really, really what I'm about right now. And then I'll show you some more. Um, there are millions of places to look for inspiration besides just the book. Um, this one is plaster work. Have you ever looked at those old ceilings and seen such gorgeous, gorgeous stuff? Each of these medallions, let's get you in a little closer. Each of these medallions has a different pattern and a different look. Um, these little border things up here could very well think of that as a triangle. When you have a triangle in your lace design, fill it with something that you've that's inspired you. Go through and you can just find a million ways to elaborate and embellish. Let's go back. Look at how fantastic. If you need to know how to begin a round pattern, that's a great beginning place. Um, here's a repeating border of squares going around the edge of this one. Um, the sources for all of these is in your printed materials. Um, the Book of Ornament has very full, repetitive, awesome um, elements that you can use. You know, but so what I found when I created the the beginner's guide to lace design, what I found was that I didn't want to pull out 20 books to design lace. So I took the main basic elements, and then from there I could go pull out a couple of books and get inspired. But this, um, you're looking always for pattern books. There are books if you look on Amazon, um, lace design. Here we go. We've got antique lace. This is real lace, the kind made out of thread. Um, awesome little filling type things. So the key is isolation. Isolate out one little piece of something. That's a great little leaf motif to be able to decorate the bottom of something or even just that band. Or look at they put little flower buds with double dropped bees. Okay, so isolation and beginning to notice those fine details. Um, that's what you're always looking for. Make your own sketchbook and fill it with ideas that you get. Um, you know, you're going to have, some people are going to be really round, curvy lace makers. Some are going to be very graphic and bold. Both are correct. Um, Battenberg lace is a whole new thing. That's when I had done the um, table runner. That's what I wanted it to look like. Um, here's the big book of decorative borders. In the back here, she's got a million of borders and ideas. You know, all of these can be incorporated. Here's a circle with a triangle inside with a football um, next to it. So if you isolate just out those basic shapes, then you can closer see. Then after you do that, maybe you want to drip some commas and things like that. Maybe you want to plop a rosebud in there. Um, you know, maybe a little Christmas tree or a teddy bear or whatever. Um, there's just millions and millions of options. Okay, so then... Let's see, we'll go down our pile. Okay, here's a book of women's fashions. And when you look at the detailing on the clothing from Victorian era, you're going to see a lot of inspired brocade and lace ideas. And so the idea is, is just to constantly be looking out. I take pictures of lace ideas all the time. Here's some awesome shirt details whole dresses made out of lace. Imagine that. That would be beautiful. Okay, so then gardening. Um, here are books with gardens and things like that in them. Here are buildings. I love that motif with the angles and things. And the thing is, is it each little thing is going to inspire different people different ways. Um, there's not gardens, I think, in here. You know, the, the detail on buildings is lace. Look at the details on these different little pergola type, type structures. I mean, we can really go look at fencing. Fencing has now become lace. Look at the Victorian ironwork. Oh, yeah, that's great. Okay, I think we had, yeah. So the, the Victorian knot gardens, or the, um, I don't know, maybe the even younger than Victorian, but the knot gardens are whole new patterns of lace and connectivity. And they're all being inspired and just drawn off of rugs. Look at this. I mean, how many times have you looked at the rug in your living room 
and seen a great big giant pattern, well, it's all a repeating lace pattern. You can just expand on it. Lace is simply one pattern that expands and expands and expands and connects. Okay, so you can make it as complex as you want and as simple as you want. All right, then we go into embroidery. Like embroidery, like who would think all these things would be lacy? Um, but look, when you get into these borders, wouldn't it be fun to do a shamrock border on something, on a banner or something? Um, you know, here's a stylized kind of quilt thing that you could use as a border, a repeating. This is a whole lace pattern. You could paint an ornament with this pattern right here, and it would be beautiful. Um, put a little cross hatching here and there, connect it with dots, and presto. Okay, then you go into, this one is a um, decorative design. And once again, you've got, anytime you have symmetry, you can have lace. And I, I'm, I'm probably assuming you can have s lace without symmetry. And then my favorite, and you can tell by how many post notes I have in there, is my snowflakes. Because when you're beginning, um, lace toppers and stuff like that it is so difficult to start and be unique sometimes. So I found this fantastic book of all millions of kinds of snowflakes. And it shows you all the beginnings. Okay, so lots and lots and lots of fun ways to start. Here's the whatever five-sided um, deal. On that note, um, then we've got borders, and then one of my favorites, I've got two more to share with you and then we're done. This is Bertha Kustrup, the Handbook of Decorative Motifs. And what she does in this book is she shows you how to make a repeat pattern, and this is this is good for anybody, for any, like this is not lace, this is patterning, okay, but this is repeat patterning. So what she's done is she's taken one motif and she has created borders with it. And so she takes and structures out her edges and the same thing here. Look at how fun that is to have just that little bit of repeat go on and then she's done one piece and then laid it out and done it over and over again. This is, here's holly. You know, who would think of holly as a border or holly as lace? Okay, then here, same thing. She's just repeated, and we'll get into some of those ways of how you do that. <clears throat> okay, arabesques. I'm not quite certain what an arabesque is, but it looks very much like ironwork um, and great work. And this is an old, old, like these things were taken from, this is in French, I think. Um, it is a strange kind of book, but it is so inspirational. There are a million things. Some of this is way too complicated. But if we take just this little star motif out of that, that might be just enough. Or the little fleur-de-lis on the corners. You know, that you don't take the whole thing. You don't look at it and go, wow, that's too hard. You take the fact that there are four circles sitting there with a crossed motif in the beginning. You start with that. Or even these little diamonds up here at the top. So you start with the little techniques, or with the little sections, and then you build. All right, so how do you begin? Well, you need some nice sharp pencils. You need yellow tracing paper. I like yellow better than white. Just tear it down. I've got a giant, giant roll for big projects. And then what you can do is you can lay out, you know, on your grid, and you can sketch a pattern that you'd like. Well, the very first thing you need to know, this grid that comes with this, um, with the book, is um, you could easily laminate these two to make them real durable. Um, this book, uh, this grid, takes you out to about the middle of an ornament. Um, and by the time you get out here, you need to be aware that your ornament pattern on your ornament is going to splay a little bit further than this will. So when you're painting, it actually because it goes around that edge, it's a little bit fatter. But this works pretty well. I've used this for about 10 years now. <clears throat> and then this is a straight grid. So for example, if I knew that I wanted to paint an egg and I knew maybe that I wanted this motif in the middle, and so I was gonna divide my egg, invaluable tool, right, is our um, flexible see-through ruler. So I can start at my top, and I know I'm gonna want, say, a two inch um, grid there in the middle. So I would come down here find my two inches, which is just about there, then I can sketch that. And then say I know that I want to go um, one repeat, you know, maybe I want that front piece. So I might say I want it that wide. 
Okay, and then it will repeat around your shape. So from here, then I can say, well, what do I want now? Um, now I want an oval in there. Okay, I can draw that oval. I can erase it and make it, you know, smoother, fatter, whatever I want to do. And then, so how do I decorate my oval? Well, I always put cross hatching and everything. Okay, so now we're going to cross hatch. And it was a spring egg, so I know that I want a rosebud. Okay, now this isn't really lace we talked about, okay, but it is pattern making, and that really is more what lace is. I can decide. I generally don't decide how to decorate my designs first. I usually get them on the piece and then decorate as I go. But then this leads me to a place where I can say, from here, this is making a straight pattern. From here, maybe I want this kind of a border. Maybe I want this to go here and be thicker. And remember, this is a sketch. You're not going to rub this on your piece. Um, you're not going to take this from here, and you're not going to automatically just, um, you know, this isn't going to be what looks like the painted piece. This is showing you spaces and relationships and busyness and things like that. So then from there, I might go with a series of dots inside a wide border. Maybe I don't want dots. Maybe I want squares. You know, maybe that's the feel. Maybe I want a little bit more country, casual feel. Maybe I want checks. Okay, now I look to see if I like it. Do I like that? Mm, maybe not so much. Okay, so maybe I want this wider on the sides. Oh, that brings it nicely. I like that, so I'll get rid of this. And so this is all about kind of building on choices. Now, am I going to worry about whether that's perfectly even? As long as it's basically there, I'm not going to worry about that because when I paint it, I'm going to paint it right. Okay. So that's how you begin. Now what you would do next is, like, it would be ridiculous to sit there and say, okay, now I'm going to design that thing over and over again. But it's not so ridiculous if you lay it out. Now I can put my yellow tracing paper on my yellow tracing paper. I can sketch. Give myself my grid. Now watch this. I can lay this and move it down the road. Now I can see what two side by side would look like if I was doing a straight one. Well now I'm feeling maybe like I need some element in here. So maybe I take, and this is where, put that there, you can come to this book or any of the other books. Um, you can go here and there are ways to join things with different pattern lines. Um, scallop side by side, um, overlapping, there's one that was big fat. Yeah, this one is one of my favorite ways. So here they took a big element, and then they put a little element side by side, and then you connect. So maybe what we want here is maybe I want to go with a diamond. Okay, and then now what do I do? Okay, well maybe when I come here, maybe that little leaf motif can come up, and it instead of being a um, instead of being a stroke, maybe it's going to be uh, what do you call that stroke? Um, an S stroke instead of a comma stroke. So then I can see if I like, you know, that kind of thing. But am I worried about that pattern being perfect? Absolutely not. So maybe I'll drop that, maybe I'll put this there, maybe I'll make it unified with cross hatching, and now I have that repeating pattern that goes along. Um, the biggest key is to not be afraid to mess up right here. Um, and that's what I do. Every time that I'm doing this, um, I take, I lay out, I put it on my white paper, I make sketches. Every time I do lace. Okay, so now we'll go into designing lace in the round. It's just a matter of starting with something that's going to start with what you know. And I'll show you an example of that um, for... Um, Paintworks magazine for their ornament edition, um, they wanted a set of kind of lacy or elegant ornaments. So I knew I wanted them to say joy. One was J, one was O, and one was Y. So I knew I needed a letter that was about the right size. So I started with what I knew, which was I needed a letter. Then once I got my letter, I decided, okay, I'm going to keep this kind of simple, and I made just a band of cross hatching. Um, so that was me deciding it's kind of lacy, kind of not lacy, right? 
very easy to do but so by putting the element in that you do know um, case in point same thing here I knew I wanted bats and moons I knew if I put bats and moons way up here at the throat it wouldn't be as attractive as if I dropped them down because this busyness and this busyness helps anchor this middle weight okay so I have good weight and then I have something anchoring it so and I knew if I was going to put that somewhere it needed to be in the middle so it could be a little bit bigger okay so in the book there is I'm going to have these pages all out of order there's centers and toppers and so you can do as simple as go here first you can go as simple as depending on how big your topper is right first you have to decide how big is this thing this one's kind of monster sized so maybe I'll come out to here and now that's where my little hook thing is right so we always got to mark that off so we know what we're doing all right what if you have what if you need to have a grid or something that is divided more than this and you want to figure it out so that you can um, make your sections be the right way this is a true angle tool and what you do is you take your um, 360 degrees and you divide it by whatever number of sections you want um, so you can do, like this is um, I don't I think it might be eight sections but you can say maybe I want 12 sections you do your math and then you know how many sections to go and this will tell you when you do it to go like if it's 30 deg 30 30 degrees between sections you just wind that down and line the blue line up the middle of the number and now I've got 30 degrees on here so if you need to take a circular thing especially if you've got a clock way out or something like that this is an invaluable tool okay so now what do we do next from here we need to go someplace else it used to be when we painted lace before um, let me find an ornament it used to be when we painted lace before that we had to use the soapstone which the soapstone was fine for drawing on but the lines aren't super duper thin and they break and they um, get dull quickly now we have ceramic leads and the ceramic leads and then before before the craft lathe we used to have to eyeball it this way so I'm looking straight down at it I know that well, we'll pretend like you're me right so you're looking straight down and then you would go here and then you would go straight across the ornament and look for where an even spot was and you make another line then you'd turn it and you do the same thing again and then you'd turn it etc etc so then you would connect things using manual um, oh just you would eyeball it and it would be very very manual okay and that's fine like then I would drop down from there I would go there and then from there I'd go there and then from there it was a very rounded pattern designs because I had to go from dot to dot very difficult to bring straight in so now with the advent of the craft lathe I can decide I can make all these bands on my round objects I can do it on wine glasses I can do it on vases I can do it on terracotta pots I can do it on anything I want and then it gives me the option of creating lace that is connected by bands of things and it gives me little islands of lace instead of having just um, just a whole big old connected glom going down okay the two different styles of lace really um, I love being able to insert a straight line on a lace and I'll show you how to do that now so what you do is you lock down you use your ceramic pencil which is super fine and you just click to get more out okay and then you push to load it all right comes with refills so you just lock your hand you set it right on top of here if you are a measurer then you simply put your line there I want a quarter of an inch there I've got my quarter of an inch that starts you and then you simply just lock your hand and twist with the other hand and look at that lines up perfectly right there so very very simple to create bands and borders I can even put my paintbrush down there as long as you've got a paintbrush with a full belly like the Raphael I can even put my paintbrush down here and create a very smooth line just going around okay that gives me the ability and by the way this craft lathe brilliant because look at how I can hold this down here I can anchor my hand on it when I'm painting my lace I, it's just all stationary for me I mean it is absolutely wonderful now I can make a lace design in a band instead of having to connect it all off of the top 
Okay, so that changes um, just all the design rules. And while I've got this ornament out, let me just show you real quick, since this is about lace painting. Um, let's get in real tight, see if I can get the reflection. This is, of course, black on pink, which is a unique like color combination, very rich, very elegant. This is um, gloss varnish. This is glass stain, and I don't know if you can see it, but this has such a bejeweled look compared to this one. So um, just a different, as we've gone adventing into um, all the different tools, the glass stain gives a much richer, more crystallized look. Okay, so back to lace design. So I get my pattern down here. I've got it arranged in the middle, and maybe I say I'm going to want um, a border. Can't use a white pencil. Oh, and these um, ceramic pencils, they're called Ghost Writers, and they come in pink, green, gray, um, white, yellow, and they come in, the refills, of course, and they're erasable with um, spit. This triple threat eraser, which when you're erasing on um, delicate ornaments, this, you can cut the rounded tip off, and create flat little square edges so that I can go right on in to the middle of an intricate design and I can just take away just enough right on next to my stuff. It doesn't take the paint off, it's awesome. Um, anyway, but it erases with everything. So when you get these, or there's also one that has a white and a gray and that's a triple threat ghostwriter. Okay, so say I'm going to want to put a band down here. Then I'm going to take this, I'm going to come around here and I know I want my band to be about, you know, that big. So I'll mark, start with what you know first, right? I know I want that. The other thing that you don't have to do is you don't have to, you don't have to paint or do the whole design unless you're really unsure. So I could take and I could put my oval in this section. That's why these are sectioned off for you. Um, and I could repeat and say, okay, I'm liking that. And then I don't need to put them all the way around. If I get two or three repeats, you'll normally see my patterns come in quarters. Once I get a quadrant done, I can kind of eyeball it. And you can put two mirrors right there, and that will give you a 360 um, look. Okay, so you get your design on there the way that you want it, and you start looking for ways to embellish. We're going to take the ovals out because they're like a big element, and I don't want to do big elements right now. So maybe I'll go in here and I'll do um, scallops. So then I know I want a scallop here, a scallop here. So I know to touch that bottom thing, maybe I want a double scallop. Okay, now I can come here and I can double scallop. Now maybe I want a triple scallop. Okay, not a problem. Now how do I want to decorate it? All right, maybe I do want to go with this little upside down little nub thing. Okay. Maybe I want to hang a stroke right there. So you start asking yourself, okay, what do I want to do next? Um, this overlapping scallop is a really interesting idea to me. <clears throat> so maybe I want a scallop. Whoops. And maybe I want to keep it in my lines. I'll make a flat scallop. But now I'll start this one right over next to it. And now it's creating just a brand new whole element. Now it's almost a series of V's. Okay, if you can see, that, that's a, like an intertwined design. And then maybe, okay, maybe I'll go down and I'll do, I can do, I can repeat endlessly. So the idea is, is from every line, now so say, I'll just turn it around instead of erasing. I get so excited and I hope that you're feeling the, the energy and the excitement because this is so much fun. Um, and I challenge you just to sit down with a piece of paper, sit in front of the book, um, sit in front of resource material that you have, and just go with it. Have fun, you know, just, just try. So maybe I want to do something a little more angular. Maybe I want to come down here, and I want to come into, so that's one, two, three, so it's three of these, so one, two, and three. Maybe now I'll do that. Okay, well, how do I, how do I decorate a big V? Go down there, I'll give myself a repeat to see how busy it's going to look. Okay, so now look at, I'm making a star technique around here. So do you see that one thing that you do becomes something else that you do? Now I don't need the line anymore. 
because that's where I wanted it to say. We'll just pretend. Okay, get me lined up. Now from here, um, as in the book, you take your V's and it shows you different combinations of things that you can do with your V's. And there's like um, three or four or five pages of these. Um, you can cross hatch. Okay, that's one way to treat it. You can make a band. Okay, and you can fill it with dots. You could put just a single stroke in there. You could bring another V down. And then you can treat that differently. Okay, so then we have a, that, and then maybe we do this one cross hatching. Because once we get a lot of that going on, that's going to be a nice negative space kind of um, holder. It gives us an option to do a lot of stuff. When we get into this middle area here, where just where things are going to kind of be getting big on the ornament. That's a place where you could say, I'm going to leave a space. If you're going to sell, I'm going to leave a space, and I'm going to provide this as a place to put, like, um, John and Mary, 2011. Okay. Now you have a wedding ornament or something like that, or baby's first Christmas. If you just take out an element, I could take out this whole area if I wanted to. And that will eventually create a negative space that will be real pretty to put the name and signature into for customization. Customization just works. When you're going to sell at craft shows, number one, paint in your booth. Absolutely paint these ornaments while you're sitting there. Have the craft lathe loaded with five or six of them. Have patterns on them. Make them happen. Leave that space to personalize um, because that is what people will pay the money for is if you can customize that. Um, people, I have a little bucket here um, that was given to me, painted little roses, and it says, thank you, Patty. And I've had this for probably 10 years, or maybe even more. But I keep it because, it, A, it was so sweet, and um, it's got my name on it. Like, people keep that stuff. Okay, so um, if you ever want to make sure people are going to keep their Christmas gifts that you make, um, just personalize the ever loving heck out of it. All right, so then we go in and we want to just slowly build on this. So from here we might put comma strokes to fill the space. From here we might put a border. From So you're just going to start putting all of your pieces and elements together and I'll go get some examples for you. Okay, so here's a design that I did um, recently. And so I started with my circle, dropped down some scallops, gave them like a double um, the double scallop kind of thing. And then I knew I was going to want, so by doing this on my grid, here, then I was able to drop way down. Okay, I knew I wanted a negative space, drop way down and give myself these dots. Okay, then I could fill in from there with this long, long things on ornaments are very, very elegant. Um, the tighter you get and the more detailed it gets a little bit kind of busy. Um, changing how you dot things. You can dot all the way down and alternate. Putting a single dot in the middle is interesting because it allows your eye to follow kind of bridgy, kind of jewel looking. Oh, by the way, look at pictures um, in your magazines of jewelry, watches, things like that. They have excellent um, inspiration for lace. Okay, so then from there, um, let's see. totally different kind of thing. I started with ginormous star shape. Okay, And you'll see I only did that much detail and then I was like, okay, I know how that's going to look. I like that look. I'm good. I don't need to make it go all the way around. And I wanted it to drop down a little lower than my pattern, so I just took it out. Um, I used the band. That's the same thing as using the craft lathe. Um, so by making my border, I knew that I, would, I could have a perfectly straight, wonderful line. Okay, then here are some examples of, oh, that takes all together, some borders. And if you think about this, what's really, really, really cool about this is I think you would be able to see this. So this is the, um, you know, a dime or a quarter overlapped each way, and it creates this fantastic knot-like design. 
And you could use a stencil or a template of a butterfly, put it in to your thing, and then from there dot or create an entire decorated butterfly and have a gorgeous bandbox border to go around. Okay, um, same thing here. You've got a heart shape. Very simple fan and a very simple heart. And see how you can go off of this and create just a whole entire design. Um, just lots and lots and lots and lots of things you can do. Here's one that is using a grid and using um, the fleur-de-lis stencil. So you can create this and then start filling in from your grid that you would flip over and then repeat on the other side and you'd create this wonderful kind of lace but once again pattern border. Sorry for all the rustling in the background. These are in a big pile on my floor here. Same thing here. Okay, you've got this shield shape, which has been reversed and mirrored and shield shaped on the other side. You don't have to be able to draw symmetrically. You can just flip your paper over and do it the opposite way. Okay, so then you can fill it in alternating ways. Okay, one of my favorite examples of new, and I'll tell you what, we will be having many, many new um, stencils come out that have this motif. Not this motif, but one like it. Um, a border motif is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so this is a jewels border stencil. I've had this created specifically because I want to paint jewels and I want to create um, an easy way to make all of the um, gold brick rack stuff that holds jewels into their um, their foundation. I wanted it in different sizes so that I could create borders different ways. I did not ever think in a million years that I could make it kind of have a Battenberg lace feel. Um, I think that's kind of cool. So here is here's my step by step. Ah. So what I did with this, you can see it here, let me get this away. What I did with this is I simply use the little mini daubers. Um, let me find one. Well, anyway, I use the little daubers. They fit on your fingertip to get around all of the details that I didn't want. So the first thing you have to be able to do is look at a stencil and take away from it. So I decided I wanted all of this lacy stuff and none of the other stuff. Okay. So then I come here and well, it's the same technique. Then I come here, and so here is. I didn't have anything between, and here I have something between. So I treated it straight, put in my cross hatching, right? Now what do I do? Okay, well I want to bring it out to this level, so now I'll bring a great big ginormous um, stroke out there. And then I'll bring out a couple more, and does that please me? One big dot right there, yes, descending dots here. Okay, yeah, I like that. Okay, so that's how I did that. Then. I added dots everywhere. Let's get in here so you can see. Okay, so I used the dots as strokes to accent. I filled the center with the um, cross hatching, put strokes going in and strokes coming out, and then just dotted around the biggest dot on the end where it should be the largest. Um, I highlighted in whatever, um, but the border was so fast to do because I had all my basing done with my um, stencil. So let's look at different kinds of stencils. Okay, so very easily, this is the Elegant Fleur de Lis. Very easily, I think you can see right here, if I were to stencil this, maybe I wouldn't want that square in there. We'll decide when I... Okay, I could trace it first to decorate it and see. I'm going to leave out that giant jewel. I think I'm going to leave out that square too. Whoops. Don't forget that um, stencils can be um, templates as well. Okay, so now I have a lovely, lovely, lovely beginning for some lace. Okay, and I do think that that needs to go away. Okay, and that one too. So now from here, what can I do to this? Um, I could put a box. Okay, that starts making it look, I could do a box with a border. And then I could dot in there. 
And this is just me going on the fly. Um, these, of course, have to be strokes or, yeah, I think they're strokes. Okay, and then maybe we have, maybe we just have a dot in there. Like, that's kind of pretty. Um, so then maybe, okay, now this could be, it could be a border that goes there and we could close it in. And this almost is becoming a butterfly. And I kind of like the idea of that. So then maybe we would change how we did that. So maybe we would bring out a higher wing. Um, and then what would we do next? Mm -hmm. So maybe a butterfly, let's see. I'm trying to think of what a butterfly does. A butterfly's kind of got a little bit of that. We could even divide it like that and make that into a butterfly. Don't forget, if I'm doing this on tracing paper, then I have the ability to flip it over and make it symmetrical. Now maybe from here, I give my butterfly wings some of that action. And then from there, you decorate with, say, circles. I'll go a big circle here, a little lower. Okay, and now it's a one-sided, this is going to be a definite one-sided little butterfly motif kind of thing. I could um, stencil only half if I wanted to create that total butterfly kind of look by just taking away. So one little stencil has given me an idea to go one direction just right there, but I can go 12 other directions um, or 100 other directions. So then other kinds of stencils. There are repeating stencils. This one is a deco art stencil. Um, it is the acanthus border. You could very easily lace very large. This is, a, this is as big as my hand. Um, but say you wanted to do a, a motif in a bathroom. You could set this side by side. Okay. You could set this on top of each other. You could do all kinds of things. You could very easily leave out, don't stencil this part right here and then you have a big open area that you could lace or do something like that. So don't forget to leave things out of stencils when you do them. They do a lot of your work for you. Here is one that I think is just fantastic. Um, it's called it's called Fancy Frames. And there are three little fancy frames on here that you could very easily stencil on and then from here you could treat this inside as um, a motif. You could use this as an inspiration for a board, for a, an ornament. Um, you could take it, I'm going to put a, a monogram in there and I'm going to make it be part of one of my new projects coming up. Hint, hint, hint. Um, let's see what else. Um, but just be looking at things like this. Don't just look at it as, well, geez, that's just a stencil of some stuff. Look at it as a lace possibility for when you're doing a project. All right, another place to look for patterns that I completely forgot about is Zentangling. These guys, now this is a little bit more random, um, but if you look at what they've done here, they've got pearls and shaded things and things like that. Then you go in here and they've taken a section and then just done a repeat pattern. This is different than lace, but kind of the same. But boy, they are the king and queens of the world um, of patterns. So there's a whole other resource for you. There are, we have um, maybe six books of patterns and things like that. Zentangle, one, two, three, four, basics. Oodles of doodles. Doodles is an awesome one. Um, you've got hearts and stitches and things like that. Oops, where are you? Yeah and show you just how to put things together in some strange, strange ways. Love it. All right, once you have your design um, made, then you're going to transfer it on. And this isn't going to be a how to design lace, um, I mean, a how to paint lace video, but just the basics. You want to make sure you get your divisions um, correct. You can use your true angle tool for that. Wow. And you say, okay, that's about that far, and you can estimate. It's a big estimation thing when we're doing this. But with the soapstone pencil, what you do is you get all of your main lines on there. Then you sketch them on, and then, you know, I might want to show that I'm going to do a descending dot here, and then I might want to bring up my lines just to see. I would normally not put the decoration on with my soapstone pencil, but once I paint this, and what I can do 
is I can use my, if I mess up or I don't match my lines, then I'll go in with my triple thread eraser and I can erase the little details. So the combination, it's almost like foolish. I mean, I don't know how you say that. Um, sorry. So I can get that on there and say, oh, I don't like that so narrow. And I can just erase, resketch. The You want to hold it in your hand when you're starting. You can put your band around it if you've got a band going on with a crop lathe. You want to hold it in your hand while you're starting just to get the divisions right. And then once you get the divisions right, go for your main, your main dots. So if I have six dots, I might want to come on this side, not go on that side. Get all those on there first. Um, the substan the, the sorry, the Ghost Rider um, ceramic pencil is just the perfect thing to mess around and play with. Like say you've got your band here. Like I know I'm going on and on about this, but it, there's a reason for going on and on about it because it takes all the little fear out of playing actually on your ornament. I can sit down if I was doing this for mass production, say, or not mass production, but you know for shows and stuff. I would sit down with my patterns at my TV and I would have this in my hand or in my um, crap lathe and I would just sit there and trace on all of my main elements, all my main de designs and then from there I would go and um, put them away in the box and then just keep doing them and doing them and then paint them all at one time. Um, when you get into that rhythm, you know, your strokes are prettier and all that kind of stuff so it's nice to be able to get into a rhythm. And then as far as painting on your, um, your borders and things like that, um, use, when you're stenciling it in to use this, I mean you can trace it on the paper like we showed earlier, but use a real tone on tone if you're uncertain of how it's going to look because that'll be easier to cover up. Um, I painted out um, things that I decided I didn't want later, I just gave it a little base coat and it was erased. The tone on tone I was able to then go in with like a dry brush and embellish where I wanted it to pop out just a little bit more. Um, and I think I think that gives you the basics on how to design. Um, this is something that I can't do for you. Um, I'd love to hand you the keys to the universe. The only thing that I can do is inspire you to try um, a million combinations until you get it um, exactly how you want it. So I hope you enjoy. I'd love to see some of your results.